In this video, I wanted to do a quick talk about the anatomy of the diaphragm and the hip flexors. Now, this is something I talk a lot about with my clients is simply educating um, them about anatomy and how that may be contributing to their symptoms, such as lower back pain. So we are particularly going to talk about the diaphragm muscle and your hip flexors, and then we'll talk about how that may be related to lower back pain, how to release tight hip flexors other than doing typical stretching, and just the importance of learning and knowing how to breathe correctly. So I really like this picture of the diaphragm. So I'm just gonna spend some time talking about the anatomy of the diaphragm. So your diaphragm is your breathing muscle and the diaphragm is connected to many other muscles in your body. So it does not just stand by itself. It is fascially connected to other muscles, including your hip flexors and your lower back muscles. So the origin of the diaphragm is at the xiphoid process, which is right below the breastbone. And it also attaches to the internal surfaces of the ribs, um, seventh to 12th ribs. So there are 12 ribs in the body and it attaches to your lower rib cage. So we kind of call that your lower thoracic region. Um, and it also attaches to um, L1 to L3, so your upper lumbar vertebrae. So your diaphragm is really located kind of like in your mid back area. You can think lower ribs, upper lower back area. And it also does attach to two important ligaments, your medial arcuate ligament, right here in red and blue, and then your green um, line here, which is the lateral arcuate ligament. Now these ligaments, the arcuate ligament, the medial one, the median and medial ligament, attach to your lumbar spine, which is important. And then in red and green, you can see that your diaphragm also is connected to your psoas major, which is one of your hip flexor muscles, and your quadratus lumborum, which is one of your lower back muscles. So I really like this diagram because it really demonstrates the fascial connections of your diaphragm to your hip flexors and your lower back. Now, this is important because your diaphragm plays an important role in providing stability to your lower back. So we always think about the core as providing stability for your back whenever you're doing um, lifting movements or running, jumping, a plank, but we forget about the diaphragm. So again, you can see our diaphragm is directly connected to our uh, lumbar vertebrae, providing some nice stability there. Now, one really important note um, that I wanna emphasize again is that because your diaphragm is connected to your hip flexor and your back muscle, tension in your diaphragm can also result in tension in your hip flexors and your lower back and vice versa. If you have tightness in your hip flexors or your lower back, your diaphragm may also be tight. So these connections are so important to understand because possibly treating one area can help ease tension in another area. So now we're gonna talk about the anatomy of the hip flexors. So the hip flexors consist of your psoas major and minor and your iliacus muscles. So we have the psoas muscles here, and then we have our iliacus muscle, which attaches at our pelvic bone, inserts onto our hip. The psoas major is the one that attaches from L1 through L5, um, our lower back area. Now the origin of our psoas major is the transverse processes, which is the sides of the, the vertebrae of L1 through L5, the vertebral bodies of T12 to L5, and then just um, the adjacent intervertebral disc. So those are those kind of light blue grayish little disc jelly donut cushions between each vertebrae. And then they attach to the lesser trochanter of the femur or your thigh. Um, I really also like this diagram because it shows how your hip flexors really fascially connect to your diaphragm here. And like the diaphragm, your hip flexors also play an important role in providing stability to your trunk. And you want these muscles to be able to have 
good strength, but also length. You don't want it to be too tight um, or weak. Now, as you can see, the hip flexors and the diaphragm are really connected. So if you are struggling with lower back pain, there is a lot of attention on releasing your lower back muscles. But I also like to always check in the assessment and evaluation, the functioning and um, level of tension in the diaphragm, as well as assessing the hip flexors. So again, if you've been struggling with lower back pain and just been doing lower back stretches and cat cows and all these different exercises, don't forget to look at your diaphragm and your hip flexor because that could be playing a role in why you're having stiffness or some aches in your lower back. Now, a lot of the times when, let's say we have tension in our hip flexors, there is an easy tendency to just stretch them. But stretching your hip flexors may not be the best idea because if you think of stretching, the stretching is going to stretch the tissue of least resistance. So let's say you have a tight muscle, it's going to stretch the areas of the muscle that are already released, that are already least resistant. It's not gonna stretch the tissue that's most tight or most resistant. So when it comes to releasing the hip flexors, one really great way you can do this is actually learning how to breathe into your diaphragm. So learning how to breathe 360 degrees into your diaphragm and your rib cage. Another great way to release the hip flexors is also using a Franklin ball, which is a orange soft ball and laying on your stomach and breathing into that ball. Now, hopefully I'll have another video on that, but um, I think I do have a video on how to release the hip flexors using a gorgeous ball, which I will link. Um, but using a Franklin ball is also another great way to help release tension in your hip flexors other than stretching. Now the Franklin ball is great because it's soft, it's squishy, it helps the muscle relieve its tension and let go. And then I also really wanted to talk about the importance of muscles having a mobility and stability effect. So we've talked a little bit about the hip flexor, the diaphragm anatomy, how that might relate to lower back pain, how to release the hip flexors. And now we're gonna talk about the diaphragm. And if the diaphragm is tight, it means the diaphragm is more acting as a postural muscle, a stability muscle, providing support. But our diaphragm also has a, the function of helping us breathe. And that comes with the kind of the characteristic of having good mobility. So like with all muscles, we want to have good length and the ability for muscles to contract and relax, but we also wanna make sure that it can do its job with performing some stability. So I hope this video was helpful. I really just wanted to go over just some basic anatomy of hip flexors, the diaphragm, lower back, just so you can understand and visually see how they're all connected. And really, I hope this um, kind of lights, maybe a light bulb in your mind that you know, if you're struggling with pain in an area that you can't focus on just that area, you have to see, you know, what may be some contributing factors to why I'm having some aches and pains in this area of my body. So feel free to comment below if you have any questions. And I will also link again how to do a hip flexor release with the gorgeous ball and hopefully post something with how to do it with a Franklin ball.